So today you're going to um, learn how to needle felt onto water soluble paper. Some of you may have already done it. And um, it's a really simple technique to make a thin felt and then also a way to um, shape um, let the water soluble paper, the, the residue of the water soluble paper, which is uh, like a fabric stiffener, when, once that dries, um, the, the flower stays cupped or when if you make a butterfly or if you make a leaf you can put it into the position that you want it to be in and then it just uh, dries and it has that slight um, 3D effect um, with with the water soluble paper. You don't need to uh, rinse the water soluble paper out you can also leave it in. These are um, little primrose um, flower heads and they they look particularly nice if there's um, a few like in a clump which is exactly what you find right now out in nature lots of these lovely primroses they're usually yellow out in the in 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 the woods or in in the, in the meadows but actually you can um, make different colored ones and of course you know you can get different color ones <clears throat> in plant pots so these are really easy to make and that's what i'm going to start off with um how is everybody today oh you've got an echo with a little echo let me just see i might have to turn myself down a bit i'm I think I get the echo when I'm too overexcited. So I'm just going to turn this down a little bit and then um, hopefully you're not going to hear an echo. Is that better? I'm starting to speak really quietly as well now at the same time. <laughs> oh, okay. Bloopers. Oh, you saw it, did you? I know. Oh, I, oh, I honestly, you saw that um, blooper on Facebook, Diane. Thank you. If, um, if you're watching this uh, later on as a video because it stays on YouTube so um, and you wonder what I'm looking at and what I'm talking about is I've got some lovely people here watching me and I'm looking at um, at the comments. Um, yes, yeah, sorry Emma, more editing for you. <laughs> Emma has to edit the videos and take out all the, the bloopers so we don't look like complete um, idiots basically. Um, yes, Mr. Fox. Uh, Mr. Fox has has actually got a, a ladybird. Is that what you meant, um, Diane? Yeah, he's got a ladybird on his bum, and um, and I'm wearing a butterfly, um, which um, is also needle felted onto water soluble paper. So you can make them life size, and then they look almost like they've just landed on you. And um, the first, the first um, messengers of of spring. I've seen a few already out there. Have any of you? I saw I definitely saw. A peacock butterfly and my children they said they swore that they saw a lemon one I don't I don't know what um, they're called the yellow ones um, I, I know the German word bizarrely in in Germany they're called lemon butterflies but I don't know what they're called here and I'm I'm wearing lots of flowers around my neck just to look um, bright and happy and um, they're actually getting a little bit hot so I might take them off um, during the course of, of um, um, getting a little bit of work done with the stabbing which will heat me up as well um, so Sophie, um, Sophie is actually going to go to the pet shop and buy some fish medicine. Yes, they have a pond and they've got a poorly fish and we all just look, okay, are you, um, why, why, why would you buy medicine for a fish? And she said, well, he's not very well. So it's true in Sophie's style. Every little creature counts. And um, so she's now going to potentially two pet shops to find out if they sell fish medicine and yes and we did ask that question as well how are you going to give the medicine to the fish and apparently you put some drops in water and then put the fish in there so you don't have to um, take a spoon and say open your mouth and let it swallow it it doesn't work like that so um, I'll keep you posted on that one um, how the fish will be um, going and good luck to him um, oh hi Jane how are you doing so nice to see you Oh, and how is your little granddaughter? I bet she's like like already walking and talking and doing all the things that you probably love. Um, okay, Christina, you're saying sorry, Steph. I, I, I what are you apologizing for? Um, anyway, let's do some work. So I've got some really lovely bright colors. This is just so nice to bring bright colors out. Um, I, I'm such a, um, I love bright colors. I need them in my life. I don't know what I would do without them. And um, it's it's just coming up to the time of the year where we can see them out in nature, and um, it's yeah, it's just lovely to to see these. So we're going to do these little primrose flower heads um, to start with, 
and um, I can't remember now whether you heard me say this or whether I was silent at the time, but they look nice in, in, in a collection, so lots of them together, as they actually, as you see them in nature as well. So I will be making maybe some pink ones, and I'll show you these, how these are done. So it is actually one of the projects in the Making Simple Needle Felts, and if you need to follow the template, if you feel happier um, at drawing a template, then you will find this in here. Just find the page. So this is the page where the um, primroses are and up here in that corner, that's the template. There you go. And um, the great thing about water soluble paper is that uh, it's see through. And uh, so I'm going to just grab a bit of water soluble paper. We do sell this in, in, in large sheets. I think it's 45 by 90 centimeters. Um, don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty certain that's what it is. It's a pretty big sheet, but I've cut a little piece off here. And um, to get the best out of your sheet, it's it's best to be really economical. So to let you can lay your, um, I've, I've actually got a new camera setting. Let's just see if that works. If um, if you, you might just have a bit of a, um, hopefully you're not gonna, ah, how is that? So there, so you've got your, um, your template there. And I, I lay the paper over it. And now all I need is my pencil, which is here. And I'm going to draw the shape of that template onto the water soluble paper. It's quite easy because um, it's see-through. It's best to use a pencil or a biro, um, a sort of a color that doesn't run. But that is only if you're um, dissolving the water soluble paper later. There. I don't know if you... There you go. I've just drawn around can see that it's see through that paper and I've just drawn around it and I might as well draw a few because let's make a few so they they don't have so many petals but when you needle felt it it's almost like they're like little heart shaped petals like this that's why um, the um, the outline of the flower looks like that but the, the petals are actually like little hearts um, like that do a couple more but um, you don't need to um, have that detail in the center because um, you're going to cover the whole piece of the paper you can tell that the paper the water soluble paper there are, are different types this one is the one that we found works the best the one that we sell on our um, online shop and it um, it's a little bit like um, like proper proper paper it's like a uh, sorry proper fabric it's um it's there is other water soluble paper or they call it that that feels literally like paper and that um just gets perforated with a needle and um and falls apart so that's not so great to use and then there's another one that's quite thick and it almost feels a bit like a plastic foil and if you use that and you stub into it um your your needle can break so oh, let's just stick with four and um, like I said, that template is in the Making Simple Needle Felt book. Just noticed that there's a, a few spots on that book. That's probably from when Totty was wandering around. Oh yes, and the other thing I was going to show you is that I told you that um, there's um, you can you can clean your um, earth-friendly felting mat by using a um, like a rubber brush, and it looks like that. And we do we do have a few of these in stock, but they're, they're actually it's not they're not that um, difficult to come by you might even have one at home and um, you can actually brush quite well and this is what I was fearing the camera is on this desk so therefore whatever movement I'm making you get the vibrations of that um, so it's not I can't go um, really hard on this brush mat because oh I could use a different camera setting so just bear with me let's try that so you can use the brush and just get rid of these fibers by brushing them off basically now this has had quite a lot of fibers um, on there but you can see they do come off if you want to keep your felting mat nice and clean do it every time when you've used it I obviously haven't done that so um, I've got several days and projects worth of um, fluff on there, there you go. and and then it, um, it's definitely cleaner, could do with a lot more brushing, but um, that, that will do for now. At, at least you can see it does work, clean the brush as well. So um, back to 
the needle felting here. Um, I'm just going to grab my needle. If you um, don't know about these earth friendly felting mats, if you've heard it loads of times, then um, you'll be going to be so bored by it, um, the end of it. But um, these are our um, earth friendly felting mats because the top layer you can actually compost and the base layer has got 70% wool and 30% man-made fiber in. But we don't know anybody yet who's worked through their mat and um, they, even even though they've been stabbing on it, um, loads and loads and loads. We don't know anybody yet who's actually destroyed one. They stay nice and flat. The top mat is soft so that the needle sinks into it, any kind of needle. And then the base mat is slightly stiffer and it acts like a brake for the needle. So it slows the needle down before it hits the table. So um, there is my little, my little templates. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, literally fill the center all the way to the edge in with the felting wool and um, what works quite well is to stab the needle in um, to stab the needle into the center and then work your way to the edge so if the wool sticks out over the actual shape then don't worry just bend your wool over I show you that on a on a close-up and in a minute I'm gonna have to get up and plug my computer in because um, I haven't plugged it in and it's running low this is not the filming um, device this is the this is my laptop that I'm actually watching you on so um, what I will do is I'm just gonna leave um, okay this camera is definitely not liking the stabbing so I have to somehow find another way um, where to put this but I'm I'm stabbing the needle very gently into the water soil paper and into the wool and you can see it's um, there we go and then when you when you um, have stabbed in the wool you also always have to remember to lift your work up now and then because the fibers get sort of stuck into your felting mat so you don't want it to get fastened on for good and then you just um, go around the whole of the flower add more um, of the the wool into it And um, before my battery goes flat, I'm going to get up and put um, the, um, the plug in now. So just bear with me. I'm just going to leave you for a second. Just got to walk around the other side of the table and plug um, the cable in. And then um, at least I don't miss out on the comments. Great minds think alike. Crikey, that's massive. So I must remember to read these comments from the top up, not from the bottom up. Because I, I completely miss. Okay, I'm still here. I'm just plugging my laptop in. I'm on my hands and knees now, but I'm still here. Okay, that should do it. Coming back. Give me a second. Okay, nearly there. Back again. There we go. Ah, that's it. Okay, get a bit closer. So, um, okay, I'm gonna. Um, I get my felting mat from you this week. Fingers crossed with my, you mean probably your Zips box, but Zips box sounds good as well. Um, oh, great. So you, you're getting yours as well, Jane. Lovely. We've, oh, that's right, Emma. We've got a new 3A um, size, which is basically, um, this is the A4 I'm using. This is, this is the A3 size. All of this, like two of these together make um, A3 and uh, you can pre-order yours. Um, they're currently being made as we speak. So, um, yeah, we're really excited to offer that larger size as well. Um, we, we've decided to go for a larger size because the large A3, um, the A4 size is actually the most popular size people are buying. So we thought, obviously, people like it large. Let's go a little bit larger even. So I'm filling my shape in with my wool. And I'm not um, at the moment too worried if I'm sort of slightly shooting over the edge because you can neaten things up quite a bit. And um, just add more colors into there and um, stab that down. You can use different shades of pink as well because if you look at primroses in nature, um, depending on what stage of um, blossom blossoming they're at, they, they tend to so go a little bit paler when they get older. So you could have, um, diff you know, they don't open up all at the same time. 
remember to lift your work off and then add a little bit more wool. So I'm working with small quantities. It's really important to uh, go in small quantities um, rather than piling it on and then um, you just your needle will just have to um, cope with so much fiber and it might even break in the process. Um, what I will show you in a minute is you need to make sure that you haven't got any gaps in your flower so that it's a neat cover. And also, of course, if you've got multi-tools, you can use these and speed your work up. You can use the three felting tool that will just make things go a little bit faster. You can also use, if you've got um, a prim needle felting tool, um, this one has got seven needles in there. Um, for, for the smaller projects, this one is probably your best choice, which is just the seven needle felting tool. And that goes really fast. Um, and the needles are close together. Um, so can you see how, how they're really close together? And um, they're mostly suitable for 2D needle felting. The great thing is that you can use them on the earth mat, whereas you shouldn't use them on foam mats. Um, but you can also, of course, use them on a brush mat if you've got those there and um, the needle sinks straight through into the brush with no resistance. So once you've got your <clears throat> colour um, all in the centre of that little shape you're going to check against the light and I'm going to have to, it's hard for me to show you this um, holding it against the light because I can't hold it against the light by holding it in the camera so I'm going to hold it against the light against the window there. And um, I, I can notice that there's a little bit more that I need to do around the um, outer areas there. And um, close-up camera has just collapsed. <laughs> so God knows what it will show in a minute. I might even use it. So um, anyway, there you go, another blooper. I think you all need to start counting bloopers one day. One day will be perfect. Somebody said to me the other day, are you doing this on your own? Normally you have like two or three people helping you. And no, I'm doing this entire, I'm the only person in this room. I'm the only person who knows or not knows which buttons to press. I'm the only person who has to have everything around me to make sure that um, I've got it in reach and I can just um, pull it out to demo. So yes, no, it's just me. Um, I'm just gonna have a look at the, at the comments here. Oh, hi Chandra, how are you doing? Um, oh yes, yeah, we could have a, a bloopers compilation and then just watch it one day and have a good old laugh. Um, <laughs> yes, the flowers get paler as you get older, just like your hair is, uh, is what Donna is saying. That's true, it, um, it sure does. Right, so I think my little um, flower is done now. And what I'm going to do now is because with these little um, with these little primroses, we're actually not going to dissolve the paper. So when they're needle felted, they have that little white paper still at the um, at, and on the outside. And that's quite all right. You do not have to dissolve the paper if you don't want to. It's just a nice space to add um, to add your your um, wool on the top. And now I can't find my scissors. Come on, Steffi. I know they're here somewhere. Who's pinched my scissors? I did use them. What did I use them for earlier? Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm just gonna have to get up again to get my scissors. They've probably fallen down somewhere, but I've got another pair. Excuse me. Okay, there are my scissors. These are not um, the small ones that I have been using, but um, I have no idea where they are. They're probably, I'm, I'm such a messy crafter. I don't know, is anybody else a messy crafter? Just say yes, just to make me feel better. So now I'm just going to cut um, this shape out of there. I have no idea what was cut with these scissors before, but yeah, maybe I don't want to know. Anyway, and then you're going to trim the edges neat with the scissors so you can now you can still correct um, like little imperfections if you like but it doesn't really matter if it's not too neat so it's it's actually a really um, unless you're a perfectionist then of course it does matter there and now you've got your your flower shape already made 
this is what it looks like from the back this is from the front and now all you need to do is to make it look authentic you just have to put a little bit of yellow in the center because every single primrose always has a yellow center that makes them distinct and what you do here is that you felt it so firmly into the center that it it automatically um, lifts the sides up a bit so this is how you can shape your flower can you see how the sides are sort of lifting off the felting mat a bit and that's really nice to do that um, so you don't need to do much more with these flowers just felt them really solidly in the center and then even lift them off and then do some more if you want so that um, by just stabbing them firmly in the middle that gives the flower the shape so you can see that the flower is sort of ever so slightly cup shaped now can you see that there and um, and then just put it with the rest there so um, so you we've this one looks really nice and new the others um, were made a couple of years ago so they don't look so uh, nice anymore not, not so nice and crisp but I'm going to repeat this so that you can see it again I'm going to um, do another one maybe we should have a um, a purple one sometimes you get them in purple with a little bit of white in it I'm just going to get a bit of white to mix into it um, where's my white there that white will do yeah so there's a um a bit of white that I'm going to mix into the into the purple and I'm um, the way to mix wool is by laying it on top of each other and then just teasing it apart and um, repeating the process until the wool is mixed to your liking so if you want it to be <clears throat> quite evenly um, mixed then keep going um, or if it's good enough if it's just mottled then stop quite soon and if you want it to be um, variegated then um, it's somewhere in the middle so I've got my color mix here it's a nice sort of white purple and now I'm going to color my flower in like I did before I am um, I'm putting it I'm felting it down in the middle first and then I'm working my way around the edges because um, if you fasten it in the middle it can't pull away from the edge when you try and fill it in on the edge and um, I'm just adding as many petals as I can manage with this bit of wool I've got there and then I'm going to refine it by adding more and getting um, I have to mix more wool as well but I'm just filling the shape in there they're so much fun to make and I, I promise you if you make lots of them they are they're such a delight to look at and just have them scattered on your table maybe put a little bit of green wool underneath it just for um, decoration and it sets the colors off uh, nicely too so remember to lift it off mix a little bit more oh thank you Chandra I was cutting pipe cleaners with those scissors I think they've just fallen down somewhere or, or maybe yeah I don't I have no idea where they are where they are still can't find them um <laughs> yes I shouldn't have been cutting pipe cleaners with them they probably run away <laughs> oh dear oh yeah, I know. I'm. I'm not. I'm not gonna worry about bloopers. I, um, well, I, I worry about it for about a second, and then I just think, oh, life's too short to worry about bloopers. And and it, it reminds me of what uh, this lovely lady Avril she said to me when um she rang, and um, and um ordered some stuff after she's watched on YouTube, and and she said, oh no, I love you. Um, I love you making mistakes. You're li you're like one of us then. And I thought. Yay, that's nice. I want to be like one of you. So um, it's okay to make lots, lots, maybe, maybe not lots of mistakes, but a few. And um, yeah. So. I'm just reading some of the comments, but I'm trying to read from, from the top up and not from the bottom up because from the bottom up, they make no sense whatsoever. Um, thank you ever so much for doing this, Steffi. It is so nice to feel like I'm felting in a class. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, we, we normally, we run so many workshops. We, we would have been last weekend, we would have been at um, a show in, um, in Somerset at um, the Craft for Crafters, sh uh, uh, yeah, Craft for Crafters show. I think we've probably had sort of like five or six shows cancelled now. So um, it's not that we are twiddling our thumbs, believe us, um, we are really, really rushed off our feet. We have got um, 
less staff working with us at the moment due to all kinds of reasons um well all kinds of reasons the the, the reasons you can uh, you can all guess which um basically is um because people are uh, self isolating um we've got um hopefully somebody coming back next week after easter my goodness it's easter this weekend can't believe it seriously i i just it just crept up on me um so it's been a bit, a bit of a shock this morning when i went to the supermarket and i suddenly realized easter is just around the corner is everybody else sorted for easter and what are you doing for easter um this year we always have like a an easter egg hunt out in the garden and um that's basically it. we never go anywhere for easter so that 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 that's okay we can do this still but it's just the um my focus hasn't really been on easter i think it, normally you, you sort of look forward to easter and you focus on it because you get some time off and now most of us have got time off anyway and um, probably would like to do something entirely different for easter so there's um the one that i've made in purple if um um oh yeah jane i know you would have come to us um at uh, the craft for crafter show and i'm going to cut this one out as well now with these incredibly uh, rubbish scissors that um have have been used for something it looks like they've had the, somebody cut glue with it or something like that they're ever so slightly sticky and white anyway never mind i'm just going to cut around the um, flower petals here that's it anybody else got hay fever yet i'm really suffering this year so really early but i think um it's the first year that uh, we live so near um the woods and i ha actually have got um an, an allergy against tree pollen so that's why they're and, and i love the woods so i i um i just take um hay fever tablets and get on with it and now i'm putting the yellow in the center as with the others there you go and made another little primrose so i just keep stabbing that quite hard because i want it to um to help it uh, shape up a little bit so that the center stays down and the outside comes up this gives us a few steps as well and you don't have to be too worried about um the the actual um outside if it's neat or not so neat um it doesn't really matter and um so i'm just putting that to the collection there and um oh you've got hay fever ross yeah i'm i'm uh, i get it too um Easter crept up on me too, says Sandra. I forgot to get an Easter egg for my new cat. Yes, you can get them. Oh, Chandra, did you hear that? Sold out. So she will have to have a bag of dreamies instead. Oh, I'm sure she doesn't mind. Um, <clears throat> have you heard of Easter eggs for cats? What, what, is it something, do they eat it? Or is it something they play with? Um, same with you with the hay fever. Um, February, yes, it um, seems a strange thing. Uh, oh, yeah, you could felt a little um, play egg for your kitty. The, the cats genuinely love uh, playing with wool. Don't even have to felt it. Just give them a piece to pout, pout, pout about. Um, yes, I get what you're saying, Ross. You don't want to... Um, yeah, I'm dragged up to the eyeballs so I don't sneeze in case somebody thinks I've got coronavirus and it's just hay fever. So no, I'm just taking um, some Puritan and um, and then 24 hours later take another one. But yes, I, I agree with you. It's um, <laughs> it tries to press anything that might sort of sound um, a bit dodgy, like a cough or a sneeze. But um, here we go. Right, I'm making another one, and I'm I'm gonna make one now, just in that dark purple, so that I've got two of the purple there. These are actually quite addictive, especially because you want to make them in numbers. They look really nice in numbers. So. Um, just keep stabbing away if you've got any uh, needle felting related questions especially have we got any complete newbies on on our chat today then i'm really happy to uh, cover as much as i can by answering questions um the water soluble paper is is um really it's like we call it magic paper as well because it's such a great way to make a thin felt and like i say you can um dissolve it which i am going to do i said earlier um, it's gonna. I'm begging for um, a disaster to happen, but I have got a, a bowl of water here, which I, I will use later to show you how to dissolve the water-soluble paper. 
Um, oh, the other thing I was going to show you is, um, I don't know if you've seen these before, but I've got my very useful toolbox here as well. Maybe I put the scissors in there. No, they're not in there. And um, I absolutely love this one. You know when you've got a toolbox and you only get like a builder's toolbox? So when you try and find something inside, it's all dark. It's always black. Builder's toolboxes are always black. Which and, and little things just get completely lost. Now this one is made in the UK. Um, and these white inserts, they actually they do slide out like that. So you get in the toolbox, you get a, one that is um, like um, a, a big compartment. I've got all kinds of stuff in there. This is not staged. This is just whatever is in there is in there. So um, handy things. You could also just put an A4 pieces of paper or fabric or anything like that in there. And then the other side um, is the one that has got individual compartments in it, which... Um, you can also obviously slide out so the boxes you can use separately you don't have to have them in a hang on i just need to give it a bit of a push from the bump there and um and then there's all kinds of um useful stuff in there this compartment here is actually longer than a pencil which i i, I just i think it's worth mentioning and then this one here is slightly shorter than a pencil but it's still really, really um, long. So what I've got in here are one, two, three, three uh, needle um, tubes, pair of pliers, a seven needle felting tool. The glue stick fits in there perfectly. There, down there. These, we love these glue sticks. We also sell them because they're just nice and small and they've got a very fine um, nozzle. So it fits exactly into the place where you want it to go. This one is um, a big reel of wire that fits in there standing up. Um, needle felting um, tool by Prim that fits into one of these compartments. I've got plasters in there. I've got um, little bags of eyes. Um, there's a, a tiny little mini earth mat that I've cut small so I, for an emergency. Um, what else have I got? Some I've got some beeswax balm in there. Um, the great thing is that even if you have things in there loose, put the lid on and you shake it about they don't go onto the other side of the compartment so there are some bits in there that are loose and they don't contaminate or cross um nearly said cross pollinate but you know what i mean they don't go to the other side so these boxes in itself are really useful and then once <laughs> once you're able to um go to uh, more exciting places than from your sitting room to your kitchen to your bedroom um, they're really great to just fill these bits up and then go away and do your crafting wherever you are planning to do it. So I think I really love them. I, I sort of have this vision that you've got lots of these boxes stacked up and then you just pull the one that you want to uh, go and um, have with you on the go. So we love these um, toolboxes. We do sell them if you um, want to get yours. The other good thing is that these boxes here, they're really sturdy, so they you can actually use them as mailing boxes. Not that you would, but that's how sturdy they are. And they're also recyclable. So if you don't want them um, anymore or it's broken, don't chuck them in the bin. Put them in your recycling um, bin rather than in your normal trash. Um, so that that is just um, something that I should have mentioned earlier. And, and the only reason why I'm mentioning it is because we just can't help ourselves. We use these... We have these things and, and we just can't help ourselves, but we want to share what, what um, works for us because we only ever sell what we use ourselves and what we love. So um, what are we doing then? Oh, you're too fast for me, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, play egg. That's it. Um, we decorate an egg each, roll them down the hill and so see whose egg gets to the bottom first. And with a least cracks or damage oh that's a good idea donna do you is it actually a real egg like a proper chicken egg um that would be um that would be a good fun maybe we should do some egg races or something like that different this year I, i'm getting ideas now so that's really good thank you for that um so we're talking about cat treats again oh so this is the egg for um for your cat um, they are edible yogurt and catnip. Oh yeah, they would like it, like it if it's catnip. And mind you, cats do like yogurt as well. Um, 
Nothing to do with the flowers, but having a problem making the pom-poms, getting the ball shape. When I wet felt them, they are cracking and I can't get them to form a ball. Hope that makes sense. Makes perfect sense, Jane. So when you have a, a ball shape, I haven't got a ball with me right now, but you could just um, add a really thin, wispy layer of the same wool over the top and felt it down. You can cover up cracks with a wool. Um, it is, it's perfectly fine to do that. So um, don't worry if they have cracked, if you've wet felted them, just add a little bit of wool over the top and felt it down with your felting needle and that will take care of it. I hope that helps you at all. Um, and you can, before, whilst you're wet felting them, I don't know, do you put them in the washing machine? If you put them in the washing machine, um, or if you just wet felt them by hand, you can also cover it and then um, wet felt over it as well. If you put them in your washing machine, then you have a bit, a little bit less control over it while it's felting. But uh, certainly if you're um, rolling them between your hands, then you can just add an, a layer of wool over it or do it later and felt it down with your needle once the, the ball is dry. Right, I'm just finishing off this um, next flower here. Just so that you can see, once you master this um, needle felting onto water soluble paper, I'll show you what you can do um, with this. Um, so where do I start? Oh, Sophie's uh, really mastered it by making these beautiful butterflies. She's actually, she before um, we set up the maker, she used to do these and sell them in the box. And there, um, there are loads and loads and loads. She wouldn't let me take another one, which I think is really beautiful, but she, she didn't think it was um, up to the standard. So um, this is one of the ones that Sophie needle felted and then put on a, um, on a, a, um, a card and in a frame. And um, if you um, like our maker's boxes, um, as you know, we've got the fox um, is, is, is being posted out now. So you can make this whole big snoozing fox from the maker's box this month. Next month you can make a fawn. Put him somewhere. Where has he gone now? Oh, he's behind me. <laughs> he's on the chair. <laughs> I knew he was somewhere. Ah, he's going to be... There's the fa fawn. He's not going to be as big as that. He's probably going to be, um, I don't know, um, maybe two-thirds of that size. So still a substantial one. And, and there's going to be a nice decoration, a surprise decoration that will come with it. Um, and then the month after that, you can make a large butterfly. It's, it's going to be big. And it's needle felted onto fabric so it could be it's not going to be as big as that but this is another example of um, butterflies if you like that this is actually needle felted onto water soluble paper so if you want to um, scale things up you can remember if you go big you need to add more details if you stay small um, the details sort of um, aren't that important but when you go big you really have to study the butterfly to get um, the right bits in the right place um, but then um, in June our makers box is um, to make a butterfly and it's needle felting onto a piece of fabric so it's similar to our painting with wool um, um, packs that we do currently but it's going to be a bigger one um, and you, a nice big one you can put in a frame and the background of this won't be white it'll be um, a suitable setting for the butterfly I don't know yet what it's going to look like but this is um, coming up in June so going back to my um, um, the big flowers yes yeah, so we have big flowers um, um, we have a big flower how to make them as a tutorial as a video tutorial and we also have them as a written tutorial on our website and our website is um, www.themakers.co.uk but more more of all if you know anybody who's interested in learning how to needle felt or maybe they've got children because I'm trying to aim some of the projects at children as well if they're if they're a little bit more technical I do normally say it in the descriptions of the tutorial then um, um, maybe they're not so suitable for younger children but if you want um, children to participate um, they, they should be able to do this um, we recommend sort of from the age 10 and up but I uh, it's your it's your judge if you um, if you think you can let your child lose with a needle then that's your judgment call um, it's the needle mainly and the dexterity that is um, involved with it that so that they don't stab themselves but stab into the wool um, 
there we go and um, I'm gonna cut this out now and then that, um, is that have I really done already four I, oh no there's another one there but I'm not gonna do this because I want to show you another type of flower so I can wash the paper out um, or rinse um, so, um, dissolve the paper right so there is um, the number three coming along nicely I'm cutting around the edges with this with these really horrible scissors um, in a minute I'll find the scissors just as I, I, I press the stop button I'm sure I'll find the scissors and then I am going to use the yellow for the center you need tiny amounts of this wool by the way absolutely tiny amounts so um, if, if you haven't done this yet, but you can actually enter a competition on Needle Felting UK, which is a Facebook group run by Sarah Brown. And I think today is the last day. And if you did enter, you could win yourself um, this, which is perfect for primroses, rainbows. They're the, there seem to be um, lots of rainbows around at the moment. Um, so you get eight colors in there and they're all perfect primrose colors. And you even got a bit of green to um, lay flat and then maybe the blue you have to save for something else and um, you also get one of our um, earth friendly felting mats there um, which um, is the medium size so that's an A5 size and you get um, a tube um, with needles they might actually not be in tubes we, we, um, we can't source these tubes at the moment for um, obvious reasons so we have to uh, have found a different um, packaging solution. But in any case, you uh, whatever you get, it's about the needles, not the packaging. And uh, they're all colored in there. So can you see the different color um, tops? And then there's two medium, two fine and two coarse. And then on the outside of the needle, it's explained um, which color is which so that you know when to use which one. And I'm incidentally, I'm using um, our cross star needle, a coarse cross star needle, which is one of our favorite needles. It's got a, a dark blue top and it's such an amazing, I love, we love using these um, and it's twisted as well. So twisted needles are particularly um, um, efficient. But if you are a total beginner, maybe start with the normal, uh, with the standard needles so that um, when they break, it's not because they, these, these twisted needles are about twice as much in terms of um, money, what they cost you. There you go. There is um, the um, next one done and it's going to go into the collection. So I'm not going to um, dissolve the paper, but I think it looks really lovely. All these, um, these lovely flowers, lots of them about and um, move them over a bit so you can see them. There you go. How is that? So next up, if you like the butterflies, um, now I do know where that stuff is. Um, we do have a butterfly kit already, which is um, the um, peacock butterfly. That is a makes two and they are needle felted onto water soluble paper. And in there you get everything you need to make them. So you've got your water soluble paper, you get your color um, range of wool, you get your felting needles, and your felting mat to felt onto and then you also get um if you look very closely they have got little antennae can you see that probably not anyway they have got little antennae there you get those in the kit as well so basically everything you need to make um two of these butterflies and they're about that size there in fact they're in this book they're this size so if you haven't got this book yet this is our um making some making uh, needle felted animals and I'm pretty certain the butterfly is um, right out ah, there. It is. So the butterfly is about that size that the template is. So it's quite a substantial size, probably a tiny bit smaller than um, this one that I showed you earlier. So you can make two of those. And uh, if you like um, the idea of making flowers, we also have a flower brooch kit um, to make anemones. I absolutely love an anemones. They're such nice um, flowers and it's such a, a terrible thing if you say the name the name wrong <laughs> but i'm getting it right anemones anemones <laughs> i can say it loads and in there you get um the colors to make um five um of those um so you have five different colors in there obviously purple red um bright pink and a baby pink and a white and then you get uh, beads to decorate the center and you've got um extra sort of um um soft uh, shiny fibers for the center as well to make um to make them um give it a oh, I turn it that way around 
you see the white bits and then the, bl uh, the black center and, you, and for these you actually make two flowers and then um, felt them on top of each other so um, and then you get our magic uh, brooch pins in there as well of course the needles and you get the, f the felting mat as well, as well and in all of our instructions I didn't mention that but you do get all of our kits you get the instructions as well okay so next up let's do um, maybe an anemone flower and um, I use a template um, that's a little bit bigger and um, slightly different. You can draw your own templates and um, do your own design of flower, of course. So I'm just going to cut that corner off there. Lay my water soil paper over the top. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. Um, there we go. So I've laid my water soil paper over the top. I'm going to draw around it. with my pencil yeah. there we are so now I've got um, that transferred onto my water soil paper the template can be reused loads of times and now the fun bit what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a flower and I'm going to mix colors now I absolutely love clashing colors so I've got a bright orange here and um, I love mixing it with a pink um, I might even put a bit of red in it and um, let's see how these three look together when you uh, mix them. So I'll, I'm literally putting them on top of each other, tearing them apart and then um, do the same again. So always and try and stay in the same direction so that the fibers don't get um, too bobbled up. Just keep them nice and, oh this is such a nice color. I don't know if the uh, camera does it justice but it makes my heart really happy. I, um, yes, Diane, I did use scissors to cut the paper um, earlier. I mean, if you can call them scissors, I couldn't find my um, my little scissors. They're somewhere here. They're hiding. I think I used them to cut pipe cleaners last time and they, they ran away because they didn't like that very much at all. So um, I've got a really lovely mix here now. It's not, um, it's not quite uh, one or the other color, but it's sort of... Um, if, if somebody had to name this color, they would probably struggle. They would probably say, oh, it's orange, pink and red, maybe, which is exactly what it is. And then you um, you do exactly what we did earlier. Um, lay some out onto your um, water soluble paper. And because you've got slightly larger petals, you can actually almost um, shape the petal and then bend the wool in to get a nice, precise um, edge because the larger the flower or the larger any project you always have to try and be a bit more precise and more detailed um, it kind of sounds a little bit like it should be the opposite way but it's not because um, your your eye takes in more whereas when it's small it's sort of it's a bit more your brain fills in the gap right here we go do that next petal and then i'm gonna have to mix some more yeah So I'm going to mix some more. Um, the great thing with mixing wool is it's not so precise if you don't get exactly the same mix because it, it kind of blends into one another. Um, so that's quite uh, fortunate as well. So you don't have to weigh it out and measure it and be exactly the same. Just give it a go. And if you think, oh, this is a bit pinker, then put more orange in. Just add it in later. It's like mixing paint. And, and then lay this over the paper there and again you do exactly what I did earlier you check it against the light that your um, your flower is nice and um, densely felted and also remember to lift it off the mat you can see all the fibers are um, pushing out can you see how they're all sticking out um, and keep felting each petal color it in. I'm going to use the multi-tool in a minute to um, speed things up once I've got the wool in the right place. Are you all still here? You haven't deserted me. Do the last one. There we are. How is everybody doing during this time of isolation? Um, 
I'm just wondering, um, is anybody living in a in a really tiny flat where they have um, very little outside space or time to get out? That um, my heart goes out to people like that because I don't know what we would do if you um, if we lived in a small place. We've, we're very lucky that we've got a big estate that we um, can use. It's private, and um, it's not normally private. Normally, it would be um, it would be used by lots of groups groups um and and schools but um at the moment obviously that can't happen so we've got it to our exclusive use and it's not even having even got a public footpath walk going across it so it's literally just us and um, we're lucky that we have got woods and fields and sheep and lambs and chickens and cows and um all these amazing things um on there so i'm just going to use the multi-tool the seven needle felting tool works really well and like I said, if you have got the brush and the tool, then use that. But you can use it on your on your earth mat as well. And it, it just smooths it down a lot faster. Um, just works really. There's fine needles in there. And um, that's what these tools are meant to do. That's exactly what, what, um, what their purpose is, to felt things flat fast there. And then um, this is what it looks like on the other side. So lots of fibers have been pushed through. I'm going to cut around the outside again. And again, I'm going to neaten up some of these wispy ends that I've overshot. Yeah. And now I'm going to give the flower a center. You don't, you could have given it the, um, the center first and then cut around the edge. It, it is, um, it doesn't matter so much because we're dissolving the water soluble paper with the primroses we we cut around and then folded folded um felted the center so that the, the petals lifted up but it, because you're um dissolving the paper and and you're going to let it dry to get into that shape um it doesn't matter so much whether you put the center in first and then um you're going to have to decide on the center it's really nice to add a little bit of angelina fiber into it which i've also got Really lovely mixed in um, there. Just a little bit of that. It you need tiny, tiny amounts, but it's extremely sparkly and um, and and definitely visible. And then you just have to pick your center color. Um, I might go for something a bit greeny there. Mix it in. I'm actually mi using a, a wool. Um, a wool top now and what I'm going to do is instead of um, giving it like a bulbous center I'm just going to give it more of a, um, a feature so that the, the bits are sticking into the petals and I'm just felting these down like that there you go felting them even so they, they kind of stick up a little bit they just it's just forming um, a bit of a center here and now I'm choosing a, a color, I'll go for dark purple, and I'm going to roll this in my fingers into a ball shape. And um, so I'm rolling this as tight as I can. There, still going round with the fibers. Sorry, it's quite small, so you have to look at my big fingers there. And uh, once it's a ball shape, it's not felted, but it is a ball shape. I'm just going to sit this in the middle, and then all I'm doing is I felt into the sides. So I'm maintaining that round shape, I'm not flattening it. I'm maintaining it and um, I'm felting the um, the round shape into the center. You can make up fantasy flowers or if you want to make um, a flower that you know exists then just design it by choosing the right colors and the right features. But um, it's also really fun making lots of flowers this way and then stringing them together, hence what I'm wearing there. Um, there. Sometimes the simpler they are the better. Um, I've got, I've got, oh, there's one, there's a, there's that one here, that's quite similar actually, there. Um, and then, um, you have the center still, like a 3D shape on top of it, can you see it there, it's still there, that round bit there. And, um, and so now comes the bit where you 
um, dissolve the water soluble paper and I'm trying to do this as, as, uh, as close to the camera as I can my other camera has fallen over again that little one so um, but I will try and get it up and hopefully it will I don't really know why it fell over because it was even clipped onto the table I'm just going to clip it on again oh, there okay I'm going to take my chances that you can um, get a close up now not bad and then I've got my water dish here there, there's the water. You can see the paper on the back, okay? So now I'm going to dip it in, but I'm only literally dipping it in and I'm squeezing it, giving it a good old squeeze. There, I'm gonna put that bowl away now. And I'm gonna grab some hand towels so I'm not dripping everywhere, there. So now I've got I, I've got really sticky fingers, um, but if you look close into the camera, the water the soluble paper has disappeared, and it it it's literally just so that um, the 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 paper disappears from sight. But what you can't see is that the um, it's still the stickiness is um, the residue of the water soluble paper is still there because it makes my fingers sticky. So give it a good a bit of a squeeze again. You can't really break the fl flower because it's been um, felted. And now what you need to do is you need to shape it into the into the shape that you want it to be in. So maybe like a cup shape and then just put it in an egg cup or put it in a in a round in a, um, a small cup that has that shape and leave it to dry. And if you leave it to dry, I'm just going to clean my hands up. They're very, they're very sticky, my hands. I will show you. I'm just going to get rid of that I'm just going to take my um, flower necklace off because there is actually a flower on there that's very similar can't get out of here now hang on I'll be with you in a minute there this um, flower here is is quite similar and um, I, it, I don't it's hard to show you but can you see how it bounces back this one is really stiff because it's been um, it had the water soluble paper dissolved it's a really it, i can almost not bend that pet that um, um petal over it's that stiff so it it does uh, stiffen them up this one here is quite folded up even um and that that is not because um look it it keeps bouncing back that's how it acts as a as a, a fabric stiffener there's one that hasn't got the paper um dissolved and that's that is really soft and um, and and um, very different uh, uh, feels very different, but this one and this one I can tell just by feeling it how it's stiffened up, and um, that's how the water soluble paper uh, works at its best if you uh, want to dissolve it. Um, it does take a little patience because you have to wait for the water soluble paper to dry. So, um, oh, hi Tomke, that's my middle daughter. Um, what are you doing? Oh, and you've got Fenya with you as well. That's my little one, my baby. Um, oh, supporting you, love you. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you for watching, um, watching me. Um, I've banned the kids from the house for 24 hours. They slept in tents and had so much fun. They don't get this isolation thing. Oh, no, of course they don't. I mean, you've got a massive estate, Jana, so, um, you can probably, um, like disappear and not see them for weeks um we have a family of nine in our home so it's a bit cramped but we can make anything work when you put your mind to it things like this help me as i'm shielded so stuck inside for the time being oh i i i don't know your name but a uh, faith mother good good goddess that sounds uh, very intriguing but that's uh, really lovely that um that you um have such a positive um outlook and um and um attitude so um, if anybody has got any questions, ask them now because we're coming to an end here. Um, I'm just trying to think if I've forgotten anything. Oh, if you're making lots of flowers, you might want to have a fair, want, might want to have a fairy to go with it. Um, our flower fairy um, subscription boxes have now been posted and we've had the first reviews.
come back. So pop onto our website and see what people have said about them. It's all good. And we're delighted um, that people like it. Um, even when they when they didn't think they would, because I think one comment was, oh, there's not much felting and there isn't much felting and they didn't think they would like it. But actually, they can see that these can be quite addictive. And this is the spring one. Um, they always will be in the lovely pink box when they come through your letter box because they can be posted as a large letter so you don't even have to meet the postman and then um, in um, I always say the wrong way around but the next one is the pansy um, flower and then we've got the forget-me-not um, flower fairy coming up as well and uh, we've got lots and lots of uh, new um, live stream tutorials lined up so if you haven't seen them yet there will be things like um, making animals from um, wool top pom poms, like a, a hedgehog. Um, and we've got a very ugly, ugly um, owl chicken store as well. Um, I will be doing basic shaping, how to make a bird. Uh, there is actually the book launch for the new book, the soft dolls, making soft dolls. We have to do an online launch because that's all we can do at the moment. But if you want to come, and I think it's after Easter, I um, can't remember now, um, Emma, maybe if you're still there, help me out. Um, then um, what has stopped? Hang on, I just need to read this. What on earth is going on here? Oh, I don't know. I, I can't read what you read, but um, oh, yeah, there's Emma with, uh, with, a, um, with a whole um, link. So you can see the, the, the um, live streams coming up. But one of them will be... Um, on the making soft dolls and I will have all the dolls with me so you can see them um, what size they are and if you haven't um, if, if you don't know yet you can make these two dolls oh dear as a sew along uh, in May three one hour sessions with a little bit of homework and um, I, I, I pop onto our website look for Hannes um, search for Hannes that's H-A-N-N-E-S and then you can get uh, can choose whether you want to make Hannes the blue one or Hannah, the red one, you can have a red one with the legs showing and you can have a blue one with a pouch showing. So this is a um, three hour um, uh, sew along um, split into three sessions and there will be a little bit of homework, but it's not uh, huge. So we will be doing this together and we send you the materials to make these two dolls, including the pattern. So if you don't have the book, you don't have to go and find um, a, a photocopier to enlarge the patterns. But the book definitely helps if you've got it. And also you might want to make more. And these are super soft. They're really lovely for a small um, child um, to cuddle and to hold. And also don't underestimate it. Dolls are brilliant for older people. So if you've got a mum in, um, in a care home and you can't go and see her, make her a doll. I've heard some lovely stories of... Um, of people people making dolls for their elderly relatives in care homes and they absolutely loved it. in fact there's one story in the book where um a lady made her mum one of these dolls and then everybody else wanted one and so they just like squeezing them and cuddling them and they're just a lovely thing don't ever underestimate the power of dolls especially if you make them um, with your own hands and you sew a little bit of love with every stitch um, and my children have all had um, homemade dolls and I'm sure they can they say that yes so um, I think that's probably the end of it from me and I'm um, just going to see if there's any comments um, all Thursday the 16th is the book launch so um, hopefully it's not going to be um, there's not, not going to be much excitement in that you can felt along. It's more about you supporting me. Just come and say hello. It's a big thing when a new book comes out and um, especially when you've only ever seen it like in a low uh, resolution PDF for weeks and weeks and weeks and have to look at this again. And then, of course, you slave away for weeks and weeks and weeks. In I often do this in my own time. So um, at the weekends or during the holidays, in the evenings, first thing in the morning, and, um, and then suddenly it's all there, all packaged up into a beautiful, and this is a beautiful book. Um, they've done a really great job with it. Lots of um, beautiful illustrations. And um, there you go. Lots of lovely photos. Um, there's Hannes and Hannah. And um, even other, and, and all of the books in, in um, well, I've only got four children, but um, the there are four dolls in there that are named after my children. So you, there is a, a Fenya and a Tomka doll and a Romy doll and a Max doll in there. So, oh, show you my children. Oh, 
there they are all in the back page um, I won't tell you how much it cost me um, to bribe my son who is now 18 to hold a doll while I take a photo um, yes it was not an easy task which is why this is the best photo we could have where he didn't look um, too miserable but um, he did love his dolls when he was little not that we talk about that um, anyway um, thank you so much for watching um, Diane you're very welcome you say the sessions really help in these crazy times thank you stay safe everyone same to you um, Elizabeth uh, thank you too um, um, you've really enjoyed it that's amazing and um, and yeah so it's lovely that you're all here and I hope that um, we will see you um, what is today today is Wednesday and oh yes have a lovely Easter and I see you straight after um, the Easter holidays on the Tuesday so after Easter Monday on Tuesday I'll see you again at two o'clock and I think we will be making a small bird but pop onto the YouTube channel and see uh, there's a photo of it there share it with your friends if you're not subscribed yet please subscribe and then also tell your people to um, tell your friends to subscribe and uh, we see you then so until then cheerio thank you very much for watching and um, I don't know why I say cheerio, I must just say that. That sounds a bit like postman part. <laughs> anyway, it comes out naturally. So um, take care, everybody. Stay safe and uh, keep positive. It's all temporary. We'll get through this. And then um, at the end of it, we'll make all sense of it in one way or another. So take care. See you soon. Bye bye.